this one. I, I go back to Genesis nine. I want to show you something because I, I, I we, you know, we 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 have to break the myths up that that have been taught to us. And the, I, I'm telling you, as a teacher, that's why Pastor said that earlier. Because as a teacher, you have a great time. It, it has never been a wonderful, more great time for you to be able to be a student and, and and a teacher of the Word of the Lord because of the fact that so much reteaching needs to go on. We have an opportunity to really, really be taught again, to really know the truth of the matters. Come yeah. on, of the heart. We have a, we have an opportunity to really get people saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit. Come on, we have an opportunity to to. to to instruct people on how to die. Come on, so they can commit a spiritual suicide. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on. We have an opportunity to do that. Instead of talking about, well, you know what? You need, you just need to come to church. No, you need to teach me about the word of the Lord first. Because at church, they're not doing it no more. Come on, somebody. And so as a teacher of this gospel, your job is not just up here with the mic thinking you glorified. Come on, we've got to break that. What's your nickname? Servant. Yeah. That's your nickname. It's servant. Is Shemaiah's servant, whatever the last name is. Come on, somebody. Right. We got to stop wanting to be served and, and seek to serve. That's where Jesus came. I came to seek and save those who are lost. What's your job? Who do you think that you are? Come on. Let's go to nine. Come on, because we got to break that. Come on, because the higher up people go, they get, they get, um, they get real uh, 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 big headed about it. Come on, and think that you're supposed to serve them. Right. Right. Come on, I'm saying something. Because we all we want to be served. Well, she served Pastor Boyd. That's her job. Right. Come on, we gotta come on. Let me just let me just show you this in the scripture because I want you to see why the Lord chose Abraham. Because I said, God, I needed to know. Chapter 9, verse 23. And Shem, these are descendants of Noah. And Shem and Japheth uh, looked took a garment and laid it upon their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father and their faces were backward yeah. mm-hmm. and they saw not their father's nakedness come on can I just talk to you from our journal today can we just can we just have a conversation please and then he said and, and, and Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him and he said curse be Canaan a servant of servants shall be unto his brethren and he said blessed be the Lord of Shem and Canaan shall be his servant now let's go back to 12 because I want to show you who Abraham was come on somebody come on I want to show you something here he says now let's go to 11 I want to show you and then it says the, uh, 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 chapter 11 verse 10 these are the generation of Shem yeah. Shem was a hundred years old come, are we there yet come on Sh- a- a- let's just drop down to 20, 26 and Terah lived 70 years old and begat Abram I got to bless you according to your generation Yeah. I got to bless you according to the obedience of your forefathers yeah. come on do y'all see the, the generational time on us here I got to pick some and I'm picking you, Abram. I'm picking you. I'm picking you. I want you away from your kindred. I'm picking you. Why? Right. Because I made a promise to Noah that I will replenish your earth. Come on, y'all. That's what the rainbow means. I made a promise. It don't mean nothing about no gay pride. It's a promise to the children that God said, I will not kill y'all. Come on, y'all. Come yeah. on. Dude, that, that's, that's what it said in a nutshell. We don't want, don't, don't give me the religious version. It's a promise to y'all that I'm not going to take the earth out again like this right here. But oh, when I come back, it's going to be fire. And bur- come on, we All could, right. come on, we, we. He said, I'm looking for the blessed one in the bloodline. Come on, is that you? Come on, somebody should have praised God on, right there. Oh, is that you? I'm looking for the blessed, the blood one, the, 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 the one in the bloodline that I can truly bless. Come on, the one I can truly trust with my promise. Come on, the one I can say to them. As many as the stars are out there, that's how much I'm going to bless your seed. Come on, come on. And can you count the grains of sin? No, Lord, I can't. Well, that's how much I'm going to bless you. Come on, somebody. Come on. I'm looking come for on. the blessed one in the bloodline. So that's why you can't be talking about something. That's why he said, curse. I'm going to curse those who curse you. And I'm going to bless those who bless you. He didn't say it because you're talking about something. I'm like, you better watch what you say to me. No, what's the, what your bloodline look like? Come on, what you, did your did your great 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 grandfather cover up his daddy and come back? Come on, like this here. Was he obedient to the Lord's word back then? Because if he not, we ain't nobody studying your little hex with your voice. Come on, somebody. Right. Come on. Yeah. We got to stop that madness right there. Come on, I'm putting a lot to it. I'm putting the end to the lie right now. 
You better watch what she said about me because I'm the only woman of God. Says who? Because I'm looking at your skirt. Says who? Because I'm looking at your blood. Now, come on, somebody. He says, get thee away from thy kindred. Come on, is it about, I know the mic is on because I can hear myself. Get thee away from our kindred. And, 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 and from jump, I want you to see what Abraham did here. From jump, can we just talk, y'all? Come on. Can, from jump, he was disobedient. Yeah. From jump, he was disobedient. From jump, he was disobedient. Why are we disobedient from jump? Because we're afraid. Yeah. Yeah. We get scared. When God give us a vision and he give us something great to do, we get scared. We get, we get fearful. And so we got to take somebody with us who we think is going to is relate to us. Come on, he took his nephew with him. We got to take somebody. We, we want to bring somebody along on the journey. God said, get your get away from your kindred. Take the souls that I've allotted to you. Take your wife and take your stuff and go. He didn't say nothing about take lie. He didn't say nothing about that. He, didn't. he said, Abraham, let, let's go to verse 5. Abram took Sarai. His wife. Come on, names ain't changed yet. Nope. Abram took Sarai and his wife and locked his brother's son and all their substance that they had gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And then they went forth into the land of Canaan and into the land of Canaan they came. What does the Bible say? The Bible says that Canaan shall be the servant to Shem. Come on, and here it is, Shem's descendant is getting ready to go into the promise that I made to Noah, but I'm getting ready to make another promise unto you. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on, come on, come on here. He says, you cannot let your left hand know. This is what the Lord told me this morning. Because fear, let's just talk about fear, it cripples us. When we see situations going on and we see something happening that we think that we can't touch, we don't call on the name of the Lord. No, we, don't. we call on ourselves. What can I do? What did I do? What did I do wrong? Where, why am I here, God? Come on, we start asking questions. Come on, it's human nature. Ain't nothing wrong with it. It's human nature. That's what we do. What can I do to make it better, God? No, God, what can you do, God? Why? What, God, you sent me here for a reason. Yeah. Come on, somebody. He said, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. But you got to love the Lord, bro. You can't be talking, you know, everything happened for a reason. Yeah, but do you love the Lord? Right. Uh, and, and the other thing, the other part of it is, are you called according to his purpose? Be, or or is, this, is this a, 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 a consequence to your poor behavior? <laughs> come on, come on. Or it, come on every, all things don't just happen for the good. Case in point, this man got in a car wreck. Yeah. Wanted, to do, wanted to get out of the old car anyway. Wanted to 300 anyway. Come on, is, is anybody saying anything? What do we see right. outside? Right. And he got a check from it. Come on, somebody. So all things happen together for the good who love the Lord and who are called. Right. You know, things happen for a reason. No, ma'am. That was because you had a poor behavior. Yeah. Right. It's a consequence, ma'am. Yeah, <laughs> you can't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Yeah. Come on, I just said something right there. Yeah. You cannot let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. See, that's what Abraham has slipped up at. He slipped up on that. And he let his left hand know what his right hand is doing because he said, I'm going to take Lot with me. Can I just say something? Can, come, we just talking, right? We've got to be diligent about what the Lord has called us to do. Yes. You have a, I, can I just say this? I have a pastor, my apostle. Yeah. Shout out to you, man. I, I can say anything to my apostle. But I'm, it, it, you know, I'm respectful. I'm not going to jump off the bridge or not in Victoria. I'm not doing that with him. But I can say that to him. You know why? Because I know I'm not talking to no punk. Right, yeah. Come on. Come on. Ooh. I'm not talking to no punk. So I can say, you know what, so and so, such and such. And then I can tell you. And then I can take it there. I can take it to all volumes. You know why? Because I'm not talking to no punk in the gospel. Yeah. Because if I say something that's not right, he's going to correct me, rebuke me, and then love on me and send me on my way. Right. But if I say something that's wrong, he's going to say, who did it and where they at? Come on. Okay. Are y'all saying something here? Are y'all you don't have you you got the same kind of pastor is what I'm saying. No, Sometimes you gotta you gotta be pulled into your blessing. Yeah. You gotta be pulled into your blessing. You gotta be pulled into it. So if you if you make a decision and then you come back and I'm like, what's wrong with you, Olivia? And then she like, well, so and so so and so. Well, you didn't talk to your pastor. Right. You know what? You, Abraham talked to Melchizedek. Melchizedek yes, was the king of the land. And he paid him. He Come on, he gave an offering to him. You don't have that kind of pastor that's a punk 
like that. I don't believe Melchizedek was no punk. You know why? Because the order of Jesus Christ wouldn't have been set up after him if he was a punk. Come on, that's real. Come on. The order of this church wasn't set up after no punkism. Come on, somebody. Is anybody? Set? I know this is on because I can hear myself. You do not have that kind of woman of God that's before you that's going to be a punk. If you said we going to court, I'm going. Right. And what they gonna do? See, I, 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 I was I was making some coffee this morning, and the Lord said we need to make the world afraid of us. We the world don't need, they, they don't need to. We don't need to be Come afraid of them. Come on, that's it. So right you said, I get on the line, and they say, you know what? Who is this? Well, this is his pastor. I bet you, I guarantee answers. I guarantee answers. Come on, and I I'm not no bully, but I'm gonna let you know this is his. He has a representative on earth as it is in heaven, and we gonna get the job done. Come on, y'all, y'all not come on, come on. I, I'm I'm t- I'm trying to tell you something. Don't go into nothing without talking to your woman of God. Are y'all hearing that? Mm-hmm. I I went into a lot of stuff. Uh, 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 yeah. Well, they said the towels are black, but I really wanted gray. Come on, I go into for stuff like that. Come on, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm saying something. Come on, you have to learn wisdom. He said, if you if you ask for wisdom, wisdom is knocking on the door. Come on, and, and let her in. Open up and let her in. Yeah. We got to learn how to be wise. Can't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. I'm so sick of the Facebook post talking about. You know what? We need to get new friends. You fake friends. Yeah. Why do you have fake friends in the first place? Why are those people around you anyway? Why are you with people like that? People of the world. People with worldly attitudes. Why are you doing that to yourself? I don't want to talk to nobody. First of all, I'm like, I told you I got to never connect the never, never connect the spirit. I don't want to talk to nobody ugly. And I don't want to talk to too many dumb people. I just don't. I do not have the temperament. <laughs> none of us have the time. And none of us have the time. Cannot let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. When a vision is given, you immediately need to get to the church. Come on, can we just talk? Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about the filling station. I'm talking about the place of Bethel. Yeah. The Lord gave Abraham a vision. He told him the promise. He told him the blessing. And he said, I need to go and pitch a tent. I need to go and make an altar. I need to go and sacrifice before you, God. God taught Abraham how to give. He taught him everything that he knew. He was a God-made man. Come on, he wasn't self-made. He was God-made. Is yeah. anybody looking at that in the scripture? He said, let me, let, let's go back to the scripture, chapter six, uh, chapter 12, but we in verse 6. And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Sishem, and, uh, unto the plain of Moray, Moray and, the, and, and the Canaanite was in the land. Come on, the Bible says that the Canaanite should serve him now. No fear is what, come on, when, when, when the Lord told you that, the Canaanite should serve you, this is your land going to land and possess it, then we all was, yeah, yeah, come on, that's the kind of attitude that you need. Right. That's what you need on a daily basis, yeah, yeah, come on, yeah, yeah, that's why your credit got to be tight, so you can walk on the car lot time or something, yeah, yeah, come on somebody, I just said something come right on, there. Come on, bless his name, get that credit right, come on, Lord bless him. They, these are things you have to work for. Can God do without good credit? Yes, he can. But what am I saying? Look, at she, she hot in the back. I already know what time it is. Mm-hmm. I know, I know. Take the scarf off, sis. Get your mind, get your body together. I'm already knowing. <laughs> Hallelujah. I prophesied a minute ago. So he says here, Canaanite was in the land. Then he says, and the Lord appeared unto Abram and said unto thy seed, I will give this land. And, and, and there buildeth he an altar unto the Lord. Who appeared unto him. He built an altar unto the Lord that appeared unto him. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and high on the east. And there he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. When he gives you a vision, the first thing you need to do is call upon the name of the Lord. That's the first thing. That's how many got vision in here? How many got vision? When he gives you a vision, the first thing you need to do is call upon the name of the Lord. Right. And you, we don't need to beg him for anything. Why? Because he said it's already been done. It's already been given unto you. Why? Because all power is in my hands. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm sovereign. I can do what I want to do when I want to do it. That's yeah. why you can't get caught letting your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give it to God. Build a temple. Build a build, 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 build an altar. And give back to Bethel and give him a praise. Come on, somebody. Come give on. back to Bethel. And let him know how much you appreciate it. Get back to Bethel. Well, you know where you can get some direction from. Get back to Bethel. When Abraham went to Bethel, I believe this is the time where.
where he told, where God told him, you go right and let Lot go left, amen? Because he don't need to be with you anyway. Come on, let me show you where, where it is here. Where, let me show you where it is. And I often thought to myself, I said, God, is Abraham responsible for Lot's life? Because he wasn't supposed to be with him anyway. It's just a theory. It's just a theory. Was he responsible for the death of, 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 of Lot's uh, 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 wife and stuff? I know she did her own thing, but God, if Abram would have just left him where he was. Come on. Yeah, but, yeah, but if we would have just left the baggage where it was. Come on, somebody. I know I'm saying something right there. I felt it in my own life. If we would have just, you ever think about that? If I would have just left that thing where he was. If I would have left that thing alone. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Come on. It's a life of regret right there. Come on. I, if I would have left that alone. Right. When you get to the place of Bethel, you can leave it right there. Come on. When you get to the place of Bethel, you can put your little fire on it and, and, and make yourself an altar and give praise unto God. Mm. Hallelujah. And Bethel is a form of church. You can get to the household of faith and do the same thing. Come on. That's why they have altar calls. For real altar calls. Not this stuff when you talk about with God. Somebody gonna pray for you. Uh uh. No, we're talking about a real altar. Did it say that the Bible that they had a, a minister there to pray for Abraham and a prayer call? No, it said he sat there, pitched a tent, built an altar, made a sacrifice unto God. Because God, now that you've given me this vision, it's great. And I need further direction. Come on, does anybody else have that? I need further direction. I need greater direction, God, for where you're taking me. I need to know the exact specifics of God. In the mighty name of you. Come on, I need the strength to do what you called me to do. Come on, I was telling my daughter, that's the reason why I go to the gym. I need lung capacity. Come on, I don't have the time. I need lung. Drink a lot of water because I'm a singer. Come on, yeah. I'm a speaker. Come on, you got to take care of the gift. You got to harness and hold what God has given you. That's real. That's real. Tell us. Mm. At Bethel is where you can get that done at. Well. Yeah. At Bethel is where you can get that done at. I remember when Apostle came one time, we were having a cell group, and he said, You need to go home tonight and make your bedside Bethel. Do y'all remember that? You need to go home today and make your bedside Bethel. Furthermore, you need to get in your car and make your car Bethel. Come on, well, my car is a place of Bethel. Come on, there's a whole bunch of places of Bethel I got. Come on. The bathroom is a place of Bethel for me. Come on, I can look in the mirror and begin to give God a pray. Come on, y'all ain't saying that I can barely get my face dry to put makeup on this morning. Come on, somebody. Come on. I had to give it a minute. Come on, I had to go sit in front of the fan and try to stop the, the tears from coming down. Come on, somebody. My home is a place of Bethel. Yeah. Come on. <clears throat> when you live alone, that's the kind of stuff you can do. Come on. Bethelize it up. Come on. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Put Bethel on every window. Put Bethel on the walls. Come on. You've got to get to the place of Bethel so that you can get direction from God. How many need direction this year? Next year. Come on. Because the year ain't in yet. How many need some real direction? How many need some blessings from God that they haven't received yet? Because you're closed up. He ain't closed up. Heaven ain't never closed. That's us that's closed. We got a, a, a 16 hour limit. Heaven has a 24 hour, 7 days a week. What, what you 16, 5 days? No, ma'am. Heaven is 24 7. Yeah. The blessings ain't the blessings ain't cut off in heaven. Come on, somebody. Come on. Come on. We need to know that. He says, Abraham journeyed going till going on still to the south. I want you to get to this place right here, 13. And then I want you to get to five. He says, and Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them. There it is. Because I told you that I just wanted you. Yeah. I didn't want nobody else. I didn't want nobody else to follow you on this journey. I just want you. Right. Why do we need a follower? Because we were, sometimes we need a, we want to follow because we want to be able to tell somebody what to do. Yeah. That's one reason. The other reason is because we're fearful to go by ourselves. Well, why are you fearing? I'm fearing the unknown. Well, that's why you got a Bethel, so you can know what the unknown is. Yeah. You got a Bethel, so you can get direction at Bethel. But here's what the Bible says. He says, and the land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together. Because I didn't ask you for a togetherness. I asked you to be together with me. When I tell my armor bearer something, do you think she should tell everybody else? Mm -hmm. I'm telling her. I'm asking her to be together with me. So if she do it, that's disobedience. If he do this, this is disobedience. 
Did God still bless Abraham in spite of? Yes, he did. Absolutely. Because that's me and you right there. Come on, that's that blessing of Abraham that that boy had that song about. Come on. Got your inheritance. Come on, that's the soprano part. You ain't the soprano, you don't know. But he said here, dwell together for their substance was great. So that they could not dwell together. So much so he had blessed them already. He took them out of the land blessed already. Come on. And so I'm taking you to another land. And then he says, and there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled there in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, let there be no strife. I pray thee between me and thee and, and between my herdmen and my brethren for we, for we are brethren. Come on, and he said, it is not the whole land, therefore thee, separate thyself, I pray thee for me. I wonder, did he find that out from Bethel? I wonder, did you find, when, sometimes when you're going through something, you, you're in the wrong situation, the wrong relationship, the wrong union, do you find things out along the way? Come on, do you find, have you ever been in church and just found some stuff out? Come on, come on, somebody else saying something, because you got the kind of church where God, God dwells with us, come on, and, and yes, we're not saying that to brag, come on, we work for the power of God, come on, pass this heavy napping, because we come, we come in here, and we really try to draw from heaven's vein, come on, we try, we really try to draw from Emmanuel's vein, so we can get some answers, so you ever been in a church service and found out some stuff? Come on, somebody. Found out some stuff, and then you had to say to him, listen, you go to the left. I will go to the right. Mm -hmm. If I depart to the right, and then you go to the left. Lot lifted up his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan, and he saw his blessings over there. And Abraham went to the right. See, when you get by yourself, he can talk to you. That's right. Mm -hmm. When you get just you, he can talk to you. When it's just you by yourself, he can talk to you. But the reason why we don't like to be alone sometimes is because of fear. Yeah. Because we're used to company. Well, the Holy Ghost, the Bible says the Holy Ghost is a company keeper. Yeah. How do we know that? Because he said, I'm going to send a comforter to you. Yeah. And so when those sleepless nights come and then the times come when you can't get your your, your, your pillow dry because it's that's, that's, that, it, it just becomes a big tissue. Come on, anybody been there? Your pillow just becomes a place of Bethel. Come on, somebody, because you can't, you don't have enough strength to move to the to, to the to the knee part to on the side of the bed. It just comes out, spewing out of your eyes on your pillow. Come on, somebody, that's a place of Bethel. Yeah. And that's the place where he can talk to you at. Yeah. That's not the place where you need to be calling somebody talking about, oh, I just feel so broken. I just feel broken. No, 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 no. That's the place where you need to be talking to God at for real. Come on, right. Anybody been on bed rest before? You ain't got nothing but time. <laughs> right. Anybody had to recover from a surgery? Come, Come on, on. There's a whole bunch of people that had babies. Come on, time. you ain't got nothing but anybody been sick? Come you ain't on. got nothing but time. I got two weeks. Good Lord. Lay it up. Come on. How dare you say you're bored? When you got a Bethel right there that you can create. Come on, son. Oh, oh, yes, yes, how dare you say, oh, I just wish I could just do. Oh, how dare you say that? You ain't got nothing but time. You can sit and listen to the word, read the word, cry, turn the TV on, turn it off, make a Bethel. Come on, stay at Bethel. Yep. Come on. Hey, I, 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 That's real. You got to learn how to pray about it for further and clearer instructions. Mm -hmm. You don't need nobody but God when you're in that place. Right. Nobody but God. God taught Abram how to give. He taught him how to live. He taught him how to pray. He taught him how to worship. That's what Bethel does for you. It yeah. teaches you how to live. Yeah. It teaches you how to give. It teaches you how to worship. It teaches you how to pray. So you won't become some hopeless saint. Tell my well, you know, I'm just waiting on God. You're just waiting on God. You got the same tongues you had in 2016. Come on, come on somebody. When you, 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 you got to come up in the spirit of God. We got to come up in him. We got to search for the deep things of God. The, the, he said, keep your mind on these things. What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are a good report? Come on. Come on. You ever talk to a Christian and they talk about they're a Christian? Every time you talk, well, you know, I'm just trying to just do this Christian thing. I'm just walking along the King's Highway. Well, if you're walking along the King's Highway like that, don't take me. I don't even want to know where your destination is. All right. Come on. <laughs> You should have joy about what the Lord is doing. That's what Bethel does for you. You got to get back to the place of Bethel. Uh -huh. yeah. You got to get back to the place of Bethel. Bethel will let you know what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Sometimes we don't know. We don't want to know what we're doing wrong. That's probably why we don't want to get to Bethel either. Mm. 
Not only do you have a fear of not knowing what to do, what's right, but you don't want to know what you're doing wrong. Yeah. What did we say years ago? Rebuke equals growth. Growth. You can't take a rebuke, you cannot grow. You can't take it from me, you absolutely can't take it from God. Come on, let's get to 18, 13 and 18. I want to show you this and I want to go to, to where, 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 where David said some things to me. And I, I want to live by this in my life. We said we, had, we were living by an apostolic movement. How many still living by that? Come on, God is going to be a part there when I get there. Come on, that's an apostolic movement. That's a new and releasing an anointing. Just like we had an apostolic movement last week. Go down there and lay hands on the car and, and, and make it start. Right, right. Come on. We don't, you don't have time to be somewhere talking about, well, you know, we, we just, I don't know what to do now. Uh-uh, you better buy. Come on, get it gone. Like, turn in the name of Jesus. Come on, that's an apostolic anointing that you really, come on, it's just, it's just that simple. It's just that simple. You don't need that. Come on, we don't, we don't need all this hit. We don't need that. <laughs> the word even to start. You, ha, gone. No, in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. We we got to we should, we've got to stop the man. Thirteen eighteen. Thirteen eighteen. And Abram removed his tent, and he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, which is in Hebron, and built an altar unto the Lord there. Everywhere you go, you need to build an altar. Every place you go in God, you need to build an altar. Let them know how grateful you are. Every place I, I, I plan on going, every city I go in, if I go in a hotel room, if I go to my aunt's house, I'm building an altar. Come on, God, I thank you. Come on, do y'all do y'all understand what I'm saying? Come on, every new house. When I went to their new house, I felt the peace of God. I felt the peace of God in the walls. Come on, I felt the peace. That's why I like to go to the to, 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 to the same houses. Come on, because if the peace of God ain't in there, then pastor's not in there either. <laughs> All right, y'all be blessed. All right. <laughs> right. If you ain't made no better, what you want me to come in and make a better? I don't live here. You do. You're the priest of this home. I'm not. Come on. I'm the priest of this home. You're the priest of that home. Come on. Like, come on. Every place you enter should be your Bethel. You should be making a place of sacrifice there to hear from the Lord. Oh, bless his name. Come on, we should be doing that in our daily lives. That would stop us from complaining so much, saints. That would stop us from being so broke all the time, saints. That would stop us. Come on, I get, let me get to, to, to where I want you to go. Go to Psalms 119, verse 25. Because the Lord said, he, David said, quicken me in your precepts, God. Quicken me in your way so I can know what I need to be doing today, right now, tomorrow, in this moment. Quicken me, God. Come on, you know the saints used to have that quickening, that jerking in the spirit. Come on. Yeah. God was quickening their spirits. Come yeah. on, Ohio. He was quickening their spirits right there. I'm talking about the real old saints. I ain't talking about the ones who faking and funking now. I'm talking about the real saints who had a quickening for showing their spirit. Oh, God. Come on. Let's go to Psalms 119. Because this is what Bethel does for you. If anybody knew how to pray, David did. You know why? Because David said if he if he wanted to sleep with somebody, God would she fine. I want that thing. <laughs> Come on, y'all. That's, that's what David did. See, that, that's why David loved God so much because he was just honest about it. God, look, you know I've been saved for a long time, but that thing right there. Come on. Y'all not saying that. Come on, y'all not saying nothing yeah, right there. Yeah. God, I want, I want that, God. God, I just want to be a glutton today, and I just want to eat, God. Yeah. Hallelujah. God, I want what you call the dead. God, you got to do something for my heart. Uh, Come on, see, when we start talking like that, oh, like the people around you be like, ooh, yeah, that's, the, yeah, that's rude, that's wrong. No, that's honest. That's honest. Because I'm still alive. There's still something in me that's not, that hasn't died yet. That's why I talk like that. And that's why I got to get to the place of Bethel so I can get myself together. Come on, y'all. Let's get here. Because he said, quicken me. Quicken me. Quicken me in, my, in your way, God. I was asking the Lord the other day, I said, God, I know that you told me that, that you was going to give me a house. You said that two years ago, God. Where is my house, God? Quicken me in your way. Quicken me. Quicken me when I drive in the neighborhood. Quicken my spirit so I can know. Is this my neighborhood? Come on, y'all not talking. Y'all not saying nothing. Quicken me of my spirit. Do I need to go to this spirit or do I need to go to that spirit? Quicken me of my, I don't want to just go to the one down the street that's on Craig. I want you to, I want to go to the one where you want me to go to, God. Come on, is anybody living like that? Come on, this is what Bethel does for you. A quicken me of my spirit, please. 
I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, quicken me in my spirit. Do I need to be around my family today or not? Yes, come on. Come y'all ain't care about y'all? Come y'all ain't. Come on. Oh, bless his name. I could be somewhere in peace. How many people to follow that on Christmas? Do I need to go over there today? Come oh, on. okay. Amen. I'll bless his God. name. I show sure that. Do I need to come on today? Oh, okay. Ah. Amen. Praise God. Come on. You got to be quick. You can't be doing stuff because it's your sister, your brother, your right. mama. Not, your, not even your mama. Last night I was like, do I need to go home? Oh, oh, amen. Praise God. I need to stay at home. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's cold. Let me put me something in the oven and go on and praise God. Hallelujah. Come then on. go to bed. Come on, somebody. Y'all not saying nothing. Come on. Quicken me in my spirit. Yes. yes. Don't have me doing dumb stuff out of my own compassion. Okay. Have me doing it out of the quickening of the Holy Spirit. Right. Because I need to be quickened. That's why you need to get to Bethel. Because you need to be quickened in your mortal flesh. Yeah. So your spirit man can come alive and say, oh, this is where I belong. Come on, somebody. Come on. Let me get to the scripture because I know that that's what you wait on. And so 119.25, he says, my soul. Come on, just sit right here for me. Go ahead. Bible declares that this is a <laughs> cleansing word of God. Uh-huh. Come on, is anybody? Oh, God. When I read this, I said, oh, God. <laughs> God. He said, he said, my soul cleaveth unto the dust. This is David here. This is David here. He says, he says, and thou uh, me according to, uh, 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 quicken me according to thy word. Do y'all see that? Just that part right there. Somebody should have just turned to flip. Quicken me according to thy word. Your word is perfect. Quicken me into perfection. Quicken me into excellence. Quicken me into the things that you need me to be alive in. Come on, just stop some dumb prayer requests that we have. Can you just pray for me, Pastor? That stops all that foolishness when you get quickened in the word of God. Come on, is anybody listening here? Yeah. Don't get me wrong. You, should you be able to lean on your pastor? Yeah. Should you be able to talk and stuff? Yeah. But that dumb stuff that we become, come on, that stupid stuff we come up with to call them about? Right. Come on. Come on. <laughs> get to Bethel. Get to Bethel. Get to Bethel. I just told you earlier, it's never been a greater time to teach the word of God. But you can't teach that if you do not get to the place called Bethel. Come on, you gotta get there. Mm -hmm. And you've got to go by yourself. Can't nobody go with you. Come on. Time to get myself closed up here. He says, I have declared my ways. And thou hurtest me. Teach me thy statutes. Come on, this is what your teachers need to read when y'all when y'all go to read the Bible. When you go to read the Bible, I'm going to tell you what scriptures you need to read right here. So that your mind, your heart, your spirit can be open before God so he can put some things in you. And you should be reading your Bible to teach to us. You should be reading your Bible for your lifeline. Yeah. Right. yeah, I don't read my Bible to teach to y'all. I didn't have nothing. To, this is this is what I've been reading for the last couple of weeks here. I didn't read my Bible and be like, well, we gonna go to Haggai hey today, chapter two. I've been I read Haggai. Hey That's why I'm talking about. <laughs> come on, come on. Don't read to preach to us. Read for your lifeline. Read for your protection. Read for your soul salvation sake. He said, make me to understand the way of thy precepts. Come on, y'all, are y'all looking at this? This is all the things that you should be talking to God about at Bethel. Yeah. Come on, and, and the pronouns are my, I. Ain't no we, they. It's I, my, me. He said, make me to understand the way of thy precepts. So I shall talk of thy wondrous works. I can't talk to nobody about you if I don't understand your ways. I can't talk to nobody about you if your precepts aren't alive in me. I can't talk to nobody about you if I'm not quickened in my spirit about the things of God. Come on, that thing did something to me right there. Come on. He said, my soul melted for heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. Oh, God. My soul melted. That sounds like somebody been crying to me. Yeah. But he said, strengthen me according to thy word. Yes. Remove me from the way of the, 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 the of, of lying. Come on, anybody dealt with a lying tongue before? A spirit of lying that's just on you. Come on. Come on. Every man should have that hand ready because men talk all that game. Come on. That lying. Come on. And God. Lying. Just trying to do something. You trying to take cut to another place called Bethel. The hotel Bethel. That's not what we're trying to get to. We're trying to get to the place of Bethel. Not the hotel. Come on, that's real. Remove me from the way of lying and grant me the law of, of, of graciousness. Graciously. Uh-huh. You see where he lied at? Let me show you where David lied at. Uriah. Put him out there first. Yeah. Go ahead, send him to battle first. Well, why can't you just do it? Just, just put him out there first. Yeah, put him out there. You know where he conjured up a lie at? 
you go home, be with your wife. Yeah. So she can tell us that she pregnant with your baby and not my baby. You see where the lie came from? Deliver me from lying, God. Yeah. He said, I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. And I have struck unto the, my testimonies. O oh Lord, put me not to shame. Here it is. I will run the way of the commandments when thou, chat, when thou shalt enlarge my heart. Don't you know these are all the things that you need to be talking, out at the, at, talking about at the place called Bethlehem? You need to be getting some real decisions. Yeah. You need to be getting some real methodologies for your life. Come on, and you can only get them at the place called Bethel. Yeah. And this is what you need to be reading. He says right here, the teachers, y'all need to take note of this. Teach me, O oh Lord, the way of thy statutes, uh -huh. and I shall keep it until the end. Yeah. That's you, teacher. Give me understanding, and I shall keep thy law. Yea, I shall preserve it with my whole heart. That's you, teacher. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments, for therein do I delight. Incline my heart to thy testimonies and to uh, and, and not to covetousness. Come on, that means I don't want to do it like nobody else. I want to do it the way you want me to do it, God. I don't want to do it like her. I don't want to do it like him. I want to do it like you. See, that this right here, this is for identity crisis people right here. To, to, and not to covetousness. Yes, be not to covetousness. You've got to be who you are. Yes. He said, turn away mine eyes from beholding vanity and quicken. There it is again. Thou me in thy way. Establish thy word to thy servant. That's you, teacher, who is devoted to thy fear. And turn away my reproach. For which I fear, for the judgments are good, for your judgments are good, because I have a loan for thy precepts. Quicken me in your righteousness. That's you. You need to be quickened in the righteousness of God. Quickened in the things of God. Are you hearing me today? Because that's what you learn at the place called Bethel. A quickening in the spirit has to occur for you to understand direction. You visionaries, you had your hand raised, you need to get to the place called Bethel. Yeah. You need to make a place called Bethel in your home, in your car. You need to make yourself an altar so you can get quickened in his way and in his spirit and in his precepts, saith the Lord thy God. Yeah. Why did I choose Abram? Because yeah. he was a descendant of a promise that I had already made to the earth yeah. through my servant Noah. Comes. I only work with my servants. The Bible says he gives his mysteries. And he tells things to his prophets. Yeah. Prophets are servants first. Mm -hmm. So please don't come talking about you as a prophetess or a prophet. And I don't see a servant spirit on you. Right. I don't hear no word from you. Yeah. I just hear you wanting to be served all the time. Mm -hmm. I just hear you wanting to tell us what you think what you know. Mm -hmm. That's not what the Lord says here. He says, I give my mysteries to my prophets. I give my mystery and my prophets are my servants. Yes. Anytime you hear Lord, the Lord talking about Isaiah, Elijah, Ezekiel, my son, my servant, son of man, not God's equal. Abram went to the place of Bethel to find direction. Yes. He went to the place of Bethel to get direction and further instruction from the Lord. How many need that in 2019? How many need it before the year is out? Because God is able to do some things in three days. What, two days that we're not able to do in an entire year? He said one day is just like a thousand years unto the Lord. Uh -huh. Come on, so whatever it is that you have on the table, God can still do it by tomorrow night at 12. Come on, somebody. I don't hear nobody. I don't hear nobody. That's real. God is he's still able to make some phone calls for you. Still able to send some emails to your email address. Come on, you ought to just shout your email address out to the heavens right now. Come on, let's stand on our feet. Come, on, we got to learn how to really trust God. We got to learn how to really trust God. Come on, give me something a little bit heavier, honey. Don't lay me down. Because I lay down with you. You lay me down, I lay, I lay down with you. So God wants us to get to the place of Bethel. You need to be asking him to quicken you in his way. Come on, I got that written on my mirror because that's my mantra. 
for the rest. Come on, if we want to deal with the world, the times come on, let's put them, let's bring them here. It's my mantra for the rest. God, quicken me in your way. I need to know which way to go. I need to know which way to turn. I need to know which neighborhood I'm supposed to be in. Come on, somebody. I need to see if there's enough parks for the saints. Come on, y'all. These are things I ask for. Come on, can they park around it? No, they can't park around it, God. I don't know. I don't know, God. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's big enough. Is the bedroom big enough? Oh, I don't know, God. Come on. Is anybody there? Anybody looking for a place to stay like that? Yeah. Right. Got to trust him with, with who we are. Come on, get that heart lifted to God. And get those hands stretched to the heavens. Come on, when you get to the place called Bethlehem, you got to be radical in the spirit. Come on, let's just worship him just for a minute.
the new covenant. This is the new covenant. This is what I share for the foundations of the world. This is what I share for your healing. This is what I share for your deliverance. Yes. Let's drink together. Thank you. 